Hello, my friends. A very good day. May God bless all of you. All of you. May you be blessed, you and your family. However, I'm aware that I understand that, that even though I want, I desire with all of my soul that you may be blessed, that you may be a blessing itself, that you may be a person who is indeed a blessing, because God doesn't want, I don't think that God gives us crumbs, I don't believe in crumbs, do you believe? I don't. From God's part, we don't receive crumbs. From man, we may receive crumbs when it comes. But from God, it's only what is abundant. But God's abundance, this is very glorious, very strong. This is too great, extremely glorious. It's like what God said to Abraham, and I will multiply you exceedingly. And this is what God wants to do with all of us, everyone, everyone, with no exception. He calls everyone, he blows the trumpet, and he summons everyone. However, unfortunately, not everyone has had ears to hear. Not everyone pays attention to his voice. Not everyone truly are interested in what God offers. However, to those whom he has chosen, to those whom he has chosen, he wants to turn them or to make them like his own son, which is he wants them to have the image, the image and likeness of his own son. Pay attention to what the prophet Isaiah said regarding the Lord Jesus, the choice of the Lord Jesus. The text says like this, God speaking through the lips of the prophet Isaiah. He says like this, Behold, my servant, behold, my servant, whom I have chosen. It is God who chooses the servants. This is glorious. It's the master who chooses the servants and not the servants who choose the master. It's the master who chooses the servant. So, when a person has been chosen by God, pay attention. It says here, Behold my servant whom I have chosen. My beloved a servant is loved, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, which means that God has feelings, God has pleasure, he is pleased with his servant whom he has chosen, he has chosen. And it says more, I will put my spirit upon him. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will declare justice to the Gentiles. The Gentiles are all those who are not Jews, those who are not descendants of Abraham, or whoever is not Abraham's descendant is a, is a Gentile according to the Jews. But to God, it doesn't matter if the person is Greek, Gentile, or Jew. He calls everyone. He calls everyone. In Jesus, he calls everyone. However, he chooses, which means he 
selects those who have ears that are inclined, those who are humble to hear his voice. So, I want you to know this. You need to know this. You have to have this understanding. God calls everyone. God calls everybody, but he chooses a few because just a few are interested. For example, today is Sunday, and everybody knows that, of course. However, what are you going to do? What are you going to do with your life today? For example, the day has just started. I think the sun is not even out yet. However, anyway, what are you going to do? What is your first thought? What is your intention? Perhaps you are that person that says, Oh, I will go to church, I have to go to church, I have to be there and fulfill my religious obligations and pay my vows. And then afterwards I will go, you know, celebrate, I will go play soccer, I will go do this and do that and the other. Well, my friend, when a person thinks this way, it's because they are not interested in the things of God, because they want to do something that is forceful. They feel like it's an obligation to seek God. They want to fulfill a religious obligation. So this type of people, of course, will not receive the Holy Spirit. Will not, they will not. They will not have the privilege of having the Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God is given by God Himself and He chooses by finger those in whom He is going to put His Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is God in Spirit. It's Jesus in Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God. It's the Spirit of peace. And He only comes down upon those who have been chosen. And chosen are those who have ears to hear the voice of God, those who are interested in what God has to offer above their own personal interests, above anything else, above everything. He has to be the first in our lives. By the way, people who are chosen are these ones, those who put the Lord as first in their life, before the family, before their own life, before their own heart, their ambitions, before their projects and vanities, and so on. Their personal opinions. He, God, has to be the first. So these are the chosen ones. Therefore, I've seen many people, unfortunately, who say, oh, Bishop, I really wanted the Holy Spirit. I've done this and that and the other. We are going to have the fast of Daniel soon, by the way. And I've done the fast of Daniel once, twice, many times, and I still don't have the Holy Spirit. Why is it? Is God being unfair with you? I ask. Would God be like, oh, nah, forget about, I forgot about this one. No, God wants to fill His people with His Spirit. He wants everyone to have the Holy Spirit. Because when He, the Holy Spirit, comes upon a servant of God, it says here that He is well pleased. The Father is well pleased. And He declares... He speaks to people who are lost throughout this world. He declares the love, the forgiveness of God's consideration towards them. God wants to save them and not only save them, but to fill them with the Holy Spirit so that they may have the image of God, the image of the Father, and to carry this image wherever they go so that He 
He, the Father, may be glorified in His children. This is what it is to carry the image of God. So, in a few hours, we are going to have a meeting. I'm here in Brasilia, in the Holy Ground. And at 7 a.m., we are going to be praying, asking, crying out to God so that the chosen ones may be filled with the Holy Spirit. Who are the chosen ones? I don't know. I don't know. Sincerely, I don't. I, I know of myself. I know that I have been chosen. Now, who is going to be chosen or who has been chosen? Only God knows. He is the master. And the master is the one who chooses, not me. Of course. It's the Lord who chooses the servants and not the servants who choose the Lord. It's the Lord himself. And when he chooses, the servant becomes the happiest person on the face of the earth because they've been chosen by God. So he will please his Lord. The servant will please his Lord. And his servant will receive the Holy Spirit so that they can serve him, can serve the Lord of hosts, the Almighty, according to his holy will. So, my dear friend, if you consider yourself called or you consider yourself, you know, oh, God is calling me, God is speaking to me here, I feel, I can per perceive that I have to go to church today because today is my day to receive the Holy Spirit. If you have or if you are having this intuition, then you are being chosen. So come to receive the Holy Spirit in any universal church of the kingdom of God, whoever the pastor may be, whatever is the location of the church, or even if you are in prison, in hospital, in a clinic, even if it's in a cheap, ugly house, or even under a bridge, it doesn't matter where you are. If you want the Spirit of God, I know that you want Him, but it's not just to say want simply, oh, it's a good idea, it's nice, I want it. No. The person who wants Him will go after Him. And that's where you see the chosen ones, because those who are chosen, oh, I, I won't sleep until I receive the Holy Spirit. The person will put this as their main priority in their life. And that's when they receive the Holy Spirit. And when they receive the Holy Spirit, then the kingdom of God is established within them. And then all the other things will be added to them. May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God.